Hello guys and welcome back uh, to my second video about uh, factor 2 telemetry analysis using MoTeC. I hope that the first video was instructive and you enjoyed it. So let's start. In this section we will analyze breaks. Uh, breaks analysis, it, maybe it sounds quite easy, but believe me it's not. Okay, but we will try to be short. I will study optimal brake pressure or pedal force, optimal brake bias, and optimal brake temperature. Okay, three main parts. And of course, we will use Motec. So now we bring up our lap and here we can see the brake temperature in this group the brake pressure or brake bias Motec called brake pressure but it should be the brake bias and we have the wheel rotation speed we will see next why we use it Okay, so the most important or easiest part is the brake temperature. The ideal temperature, it there is a range, okay, the minimum and the maximum. And if you don't have the data provided from the guys who did develop the car, you, you cannot say exactly what's the optimal range of brake temperature. But for the guys who provide this information, you can check car stats and car stats help you with, with this information. On car stats, you choose the car, you check the, the optimal brake temperature. And then you go out on track, you do your laps, and you play with the brake duck, and then you check the temperatures, okay, the minimum and the maximum. If you brakes minimum temperature are very low, you are not good on braking. And if they get if they get very hot also you lose braking capabilities and you may lock up the tires okay so you need to stay between the optimum in the range so if you don't have the information provided usually in our factor 2 you may stick with the lowest temperature should be around 150 degrees Celsius or 200 and the maximum it's 900 Celsius or maybe for the smaller cars 650 it really depends you have to try it if you don't have the information okay and it's easy to deal with if you have the information you check Motec okay now I'm I have went out of the range so I need to open a little more the braking deck in order to save my my life when braking okay so now the second part the brake bias so in every car you can set the brake bias on the fly while driving and it is important because for every corner you may have different brake bias um, for me uh, with the high downforce cars i tend to move the brake bias to the front especially on heavy braking in order to slow down more effectively the car and a little to the rear on fast sweeping corners to avoid loading too much the front tires 
and introducing a little bit of oversteering okay but on GT cars I try usually to find a balance that helps me to avoid locking the tires avoid understeering and avoid oversteering so stability and safety is very very important so here we in the our example we are driving a GT car GTE so no ABS so trail braking is very important and what I used to see you can of course a factor 2 force feedback is very good so when you look you can from the steering wheel sense the limit of your braking you can guess okay you see at this point I'm going to lock my tires and when you lock the tires you will definitely feel it in, in your hands but if you want to to have auto optimal brake and bias you can go to Mutek and load the lap and check the wheel rotation as you can see here this is the braking zone or the braking part of the first chicane at Le Mans police station chicane okay and you can see the that the front right which is the inside tire has the lowest wheel rotation okay so it means that he, when he is i was close to locking up the front right tires at zero rotation means i have locked the tires but here i'm very close and if i check my tire temperature for example the front tire the inside front tire it went to 147 48 degrees okay on braking this is not good okay i overheated the front tire while braking just slightly before locking it up i didn't lock up the tire but it was very close okay so on this case i have for example break a little bit back the brake bias to avoid locking up the tire on the next lap or on the next corner or maybe just i need to lift a little bit more the brakes so i apply less brake pressure it may help me also okay we will remove the lap okay it's okay as you can see also okay this is the chicane so it's okay to in the playstation chicane to slow down on the middle of the chicane when you feel that you are in the steering but this is how I can check if I am locking up the tires or not using Motec and this is uh, quite easy at this point because you may look up the tires for other reasons I will check something else okay so as we can see here is we have we have always the same issue with the front right tires but you need to pay attention to the engine rpm this is you may see it's a little bit strange why 
the front tires are tending to the lockup when sh shifting down as you can see here and here here the rpm goes up when you shift down after every shift it tends to look up so this means that the car is um, unbalanced on braking because shifting and settles the car so maybe I need to have a harder or stiffer rear rebounds okay so I need to stabilize the rear and prevent it from loading too much the front tires okay or maybe I need to have softer compression in order to have more grip into the front tires while braking I have to work it out okay but when you go into details like this you may start to understand why you are locking up the tires despite the fact you have changed the brake bias you have played with the brake pressure etc and you still lock up the tires it may be because you have unbalanced car okay um, I hope I have shared everything about this section and I hope see you guys on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.